Hey everybody, welcome back to Xenogears. I think this is I think this is part three. Just hanging out in the forest with our giant dinosaur destroying robot mech gear. The actuator can be fixed. Remember how angsty these two teens were in the last episode? I feel like it's only going to get worse this time. Oh shit! He speaks her language. So we already find out that there is a lot more to uh, Satan here than meets the eye. For those of you who don't like my uh, pronunciation, I'm wrong. I've heard Satan, I've heard Saiten. I've heard different people pronounce it different ways. Kitan was another one. And the doc just straight up knows what the fuck is up. <laughs> Damn. I don't I drink and I know things. <laughs> Damn, Doc is seriously like just just get the fuck out. You teen angst! So she even knows she was being a total bitch. Talking about how humans are domesticated animals. So already some crazy Nazi shit going on. Which is rough. By the way, I know I mentioned it in uh, one of the previous episodes. I think I mentioned it in the first one, but you guys, if I'm going through these uh, text prompts too quickly, please let me know. Open mind to surface dwellers. <laughs> so much teen angst. Look at Doc just deftly diffusing the situation right away by being disarming. No 
No shit, she's worried. Well, that was interesting. Oh, that sleeping music. I love it. Yeah. Faye being super perspective. Perspective? Observant. Why am I not make can words happen? God damn. them all to a certain place. So it's only been about, what, an hour in game time, but, uh, I mean, we've gone through two nights at this point. Alright. So now we have Dr. Uzuki in our party, and I believe he starts with nothing. Wow, that's surprising. I thought he started with more. And saying glasses, step shoes. So, if you look at Faye's agility, it's at 11, um, which is pretty fast for a lot of the characters in this game. But if you look at Doc Satan's, it's 13, and he does only slightly less damage than Faye. But in the ATB system, where it's turn-based ATB, the fact that he's so much faster means that he's going to end up going, like, 1.5 times as often in combat. And that's absolutely crazy once, once you start getting into it. So you'll get to the point where Doc is doing the majority of the attacking. But he's also... I probably could look at it from the other thing. He's also a healer. So he's a super fast, powerful healer, and he has a ton of hit points. Like, look, he's three levels lower than Faye, and he has double the hit points. So Doc is almost like just straight up a broken cheat character. It's kind of ridiculous. <clears throat> All right, let's get out of here. Fucking airship. Anime bullshit. This whole game is anime bullshit, but it's it's great. <clears throat> so so far in this area, we've had Kislev, Ave, and now Gebler. from Solaris are all around here looking for that gear. And nobody has any idea what the fuck's going on with Solaris. So I really like how when they introduce this game, they give you the opening where they give you the background on the two countries that are fighting and Gebler and all that. And then they cut to Faye and all he knows is the village, so he's getting introduced to all these things. And it's, it's helping reinforce what's going on in the world for the player as well. And, I mean, if you think about it, we have a little, you know, text intro at the beginning talking about what's going on. 
and then they just kind of put it to the background so that you can get to know the main character and then and then he's he's immediately forced to deal with the reality of the situation when it literally crash lands in his village all right let's keep going oh almost there and so three days later we are out of that big ass forest and obviously we want to go to uh, Dazil here uh, but I am very quickly going to do a little bit of leveling so uh, please bear with me we will be back shortly and welcome back uh, we did a little leveling we got a few things done and now we are going to go into one of my favorite early level towns in gaming uh, Dazil uh, where a lot of story stuff happens, but they also explain so they explain a lot of backstory into this world in this part right here, and it feels really, really good. Bet your ass it's lively. So the thing's name is Veltal, which is German for universe, I believe. Now this is a town where we will probably talk to everybody. So the Ave army is actually guarding this place. It's the base for excavating the ruins. The army's elite are stationed there. Treasure Hunters Association. Let's go look in here and see what's going on. So the interesting thing about this world, as we find it, is that it's in a state of perpetual world war. I believe the world war has been going on for hundreds of years at this point. Can't remember exactly. A lot of these are just going to be houses where we don't talk to anybody. But there's a huge desert in the middle of the main continent on this uh, on this world, and it seems like. The entire economy of this world revolves around digging up the ruins in this uh, in this desert, and so towns like Dazil end up traveling across the desert, following the work sites, following the military. Oh, sand buggy, which is really neat. You don't there aren't many worlds set up like that in RPGs. Delicious. Delicious water. <laughs> ah, excuse me. Hmm. So there's military and civilian excavators operating out of this town alike. Shops here, we can buy equipment. That's a cat. Power ring, stamina ring. Let's see, do I have stuff I can sell? Probably. Don't need that many hop jerky. I can sell these scales. 
just deal with that right now. We'll worry about selling items later. So what's back here? Can you even get back there? Doesn't look like it, no. Kid, get the fuck out of my way. I'm gonna talk to this guard. But aren't you in the army? You're wearing the army outfit. Nothing worth looking at in here. I really like the designs of some of the armies in this, especially Ave's army, because it's basically the guys from Dune. What do we got? Lucky Avenue, a relaxing bar. So this part's really, really cool. You walked into a bar, what do you expect? Oh my god, it's this guy. So this is Big Joe. He's a minor kind of joke character that appears throughout the game. So, let's play Spot the Big Joe, shall we? So there will be a lot of that. He is drunk. Dumb bar fight. And we're just hanging out watching. Damn. He's looking wild. He's drunk. He's going to fight you. I think Big Joe may be an immortal god king in human form. Just wandering the earth, just keeping track of events. Heh. <laughs> Let's go fight him. You can't really fight him. Booze is my life companion. I don't think he's from anything else, but just the fact that he's talking about how sucky the world is is funny to me. So we can stay the night in the inn upstairs, but we need to continue on here. Or at least, I think we should continue on. What's up with you? Talk, 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 talk. No, 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 I want to talk. There we go. You need a drink. So, so far we've been in two towns. Both of those towns have had bars full of drunks. Being drunk. One of them propositioned me for sex. It's great. Everybody's drunk. It's a running theme. So it's a civilian town being occupied and used by the military, and the military is taking all the good shit to support the war effort for the war that's been going on forever. And here we have an actual gear workshop, which is pretty cool. I love the scale of this thing. So this is our introduction to the ethos. Um, it's kind of a poor introduction because it just paints them as gearheads, but you learn a lot more about them later. Get out of the way. I wonder if that X-29 model blah 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 is a reference to something. Fire. 
So if you're a civilian and you're trying to get military grade gear equipment, you have to go to the Ethos headquarters. I'll bring that up later. But basically, we can't repair it from the stuff we have here. Nice little seed transition here. Even Faye looking towards the dock as a mentor at this point. not really realizing that he can probably just straight up never go back to Lahan. So already this uh, gear that we have, this Veltal, is special. So when they excavate these ruins, they're not always finding just gears. They're finding parts. They're finding, you know, pieces. They're not always finding completely intact gears. So the fact that these two armies are relying on this, this excavated hodgepodge of mechanical stuff of Mecha to uh, fight their war effort is extremely interesting. Because it means that they're not just going to dig up, you know, the basic gear. They're going to dig up parts that they can use to make the basic gear, uh, gears that their, their army uses. But you're going to have a lot of specialization. And that lends well to a game where you don't want to see the same enemies over and over and over. I mean, granted, in, in you know, random battles in an RPG, you're going to run into uh, repetition but it lends to a lot of very interesting... Uh, let's see, not this side, I want the other side. It lends to a lot of very interesting uh, gear models later on. Here we go. Here's what I wanted. So here's an excavation thing right here, where they're actually digging stuff up right outside of town. There's a sand buggy down in the bottom left. So badass. So basically it's a huge war economy that's revolved or that revolves around what they can pull out of their out of their 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 respective ruins that they have military control out of and then what their their scientific minds can do to to adapt it or repair it right, that's all I wanted to show off there Let's see I guess I'll go down here let's go up oh. 
So this part's actually really interesting, um, because obviously I knew what the hell, or what I was supposed to be doing here, but, um, it is entirely possible for you to just get lost in this town for a while and have to explore everything, and, you know, old school JRPGs always have some section like that where you have to find the one trigger to do the next thing. I mean, the first couple Final Fantasies were notorious for this, and it was a ton of fun when you finally found it, but I remember playing the original Final Fantasy and being stuck for, for just, like, hours trying to figure out what to do in the world. And I feel like this game has a really good balance between that, you know, loss trying to figure out what to do next or where to go next or how to trigger the next event and um, direction. So Doc is such a badass that his plan to fix Veltal and get it out of there is to go out into the desert and scavenge parts from active battlefields. Oh no. So there's even pirates that are out there just taking ruins and stuff and junk and whatever. Alright. So we could head out now. In fact, we will head out now. And I think we will head out this way because this should take us directly into the desert, if I'm not mistaken. Could be wrong. Nope, here we go. Just kind of have to wander out into the desert. And this is actually a really, really cool way um, that they set, that they kind of cordon you off in a very specific area of the world in the beginning. Is um, there's this huge desert that you have to cross to get anywhere, but instead of letting you cross it, they put you on this this basically endless dungeon. Um, that is this desert map that just keeps repeating and repeating and then they use it for story purposes um, here so while we went on our huge quest um, at that cut back there I ended up getting a few um, I ended up getting a new death blow and I ended up getting a few for Doxitan As you can see, they increase in power exponentially, but as you can see down in the bottom left, I already have, you know, another another attack point, or another combo point. I can't remember what the fuck to call these things. But just having one more point increases the amount of damage you can do in the complexity of the combo system by quite a bit, which is really cool, I think. Keep on keeping on. Damn! Oh well. Nothing like experience. The combos get very complex later. It's pretty cool. It's a very... I really like the system. Regular attacks here. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. It's like a ground pound attack. Oh, I have a healing spell now as well. So I don't... Like, there are some enemies that are that are gimmick enemies that you have to use Aether on later, but I mean, like... What? So much of the... I feel like the Aether system and the magic system in this game, to, you know, paraphrase it, is very underutilized. There's only a few points where it's actually super useful. Oh my god! So this poor ass kid is out in the, a continent sized desert, lost, looking for his friend. Military is running around everywhere. Big giant floating cities are flying through the air. Like, he's definitely in over his head. So now we have to follow them. And if I remember correctly, it's very easy to get lost here, but... I think we'll be okay. Yeah, get him. Ow! Cool enemies. Except that they've almost killed me, so I need to pull my head out of my ass and actually handle the problem. <laughs> Here, you can get another attack in. Uh, let's do some. Uh, let's do some healing spell here. Like really, I feel like the ether system is really only useful for uh, healing. Let's eat some hop jerky while we're out of combat here. Oh. Wrong thing. Items! No, we want hob jerky. Bam. I think it restores like 50 hit points. Keep going. I really like the passage of time. So here we are, now it's night time. And for the, like, we're really, we're in it. Yeah, do it. I'm gonna leave you stranded in the desert, bro. I'm sorry. It's not my fault. My teen angst hormones are making me do it. And, like, talk about not giving sh a shit for authority at this point. We're, we're basically had to commandeer a, a military gear in order to get it out of the way. We're stealing military equipment left and right, like this bike here. We're trying to scavenge from military ruins. And we're in the middle of a world war. So shit's just crazy. Oh! There's a lot of crazy shit going on in general. Uh oh. So this is one of the basic Ave gears, uh, one of their basic military gears, and um, they found me now. Hit. <laughs> Thank you.
It's Veltal. And that's the one time you ever see it use the machine gun that's apparently equipped in it. Well, that's another thing I want to talk about. A lot of these gears seem to use hand-to-hand -hand combat to actually fight. Um, and I mean, metal on metal, the metal that they use for, for their, their attacks, you know, the parts of their bodies that hit, that hit the enemies, they've got to be so much stronger just in terms of the strength of the metal than the armor on the enemy gears. But then why don't you just make a whole gear like that? But we'll see a lot of stuff like that later. It's not explained very well, but shut up. It's giant mecha. It's great. So in the time that we spent looking around for Doc, he was able to fix this thing. Like he was able to find the crap he needed. Get back to... Yeah, get him. It's a badass attack. Anyways, in the time he was able to repair it, get in it, and then find Faye in the desert, while flying a stolen military gear that everybody's looking for through the open desert that's full of tons of shit. So once again, Doc is a little more, uh, has a little more going for him than uh, meets the eye. I also want to point out that we were able to pretty easily dispatch enemy military gears. So now an introduction of a huge badass or an edgelord, depending on how you want to look at it. Yeah, badass helmet. Look at that badass gear. Right. I know you. You killed her. Her? So Faye having no. flashbacks. It wasn't. Not me. I that also don't make any sense. It was you. You don't learn what half the shit's about until like 40 hours later. It's kind of super annoying, but it's fine. But he is the guy from Lahan. He was the guy that gave the order to shoot Timothy. He is the seeker of power. So this guy just out of nowhere, like three or four hours into the game, is just like, BAM! I'm pulling the strings. Damn. So Graf clearly not giving a fuck about anybody. Also badass music. So this guy also clearly knows us.
Whoa! Just straight up, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna kill God. <laughs> Damn. Like this guy just laying out some crazy bullshit right away and then taunting us. God damn. Like, he's clearly here to provoke us. And Satan just... Probably should be like, Faye, no! Oh shit. It's like a giant dune worm. Kind of, a little bit, not really. Here we go, to steady clip for another boss fight here. We're not finished talking yet! It's like I don't have that luxury. Right, let's do it. Zero damage. Drinking my fucking fuel. Drinking a lot of it. Let's see, does the ether even do any damage? Ah! It does some damage. He just keeps sucking fuel out of us, goddammit. Oh, my leg. These marathon sessions just killing me. Let's try a heavy attack and see if that does anything. Oh, it does a little damage. But this guy's only attack seems to be just absorbing my fuel. Oh, there we go. He finally attacked us. At least he left my fuel alone that time? Shit. But it seems like these ether attacks are doing as much damage as our other attacks, so I'm gonna keep using these for a while. Hopefully it'll see us through. But this thing is tough. Oh. I was just about to say this thing is tough and it fucking died. And we look like an idiot. Yeah, we got them levels. And an eyeball. Shit, that was easier than I remember it being. We did it. We're the best. Woot woot. Doc, did you see how big my balls were? Doc, did you see how I beat the shit out of that? Oh, he looks sad. He doesn't look very happy. Doc is wordy as always. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Shit, it's real bad, you guys. But he's just so emotionally exhausted, he just doesn't fucking care anymore. And here we are in the hands of the Ave military. At least nothing else happened to Lahan, I 
I guess. Maybe? Possibly? Yeah, Lahan's fine at this point. Fine enough, anyways. Love how they just throw it on top of this sand barge. Sand barge is cool idea! Uh-oh. More memories, maybe? There's Graf. Let us join together. Ah! He's touched the abyss from Dark Souls 3. Oh my god. Sick mustache, bro. But I'll never let you have him. <laughs> Even if it kills me. Very weird. Yeah, what did you expect was going to happen, damn it? My feelings were hurt. So he led a perfectly happy life for three years, and then... Basically, they find this guy, and then his village explodes, and all sorts of shit happens. <sighs> oh yeah, I'm supposed to be doing something here. Just talk to Doc. kind of a big deal to have your entire being thrown into question basically let's save really quick by end of the woods what do we have now let's see what it's called really quick desert attack Let's talk more. It's a good question. Let's see, do we just see the same thing? Nope, now it's nothing else. Let's go to bed. Sleepy time. See, Doc knows what the fuck is up. He ain't telling us shit. And he's talking about weird biblical shit. Damn it, Doc. And now we're floating in front of someone named fucking Emperor. So now we're apparently living in the apocalypse. 
the gazelle have to resurrect God? Tons and tons of ominous shit. Oh, here we go. Those of you who know what's up, you're about to get real happy. For those of you who don't, you're about to get real happy. Everyone is after this fucking gear. Look at this pirate ass pirate eye patch and everything. Electropometers. Another pirate! So we don't know anything about these people yet, but up until this point, Faye and company have just been reacting to events, and this guy is the first guy to be actively fucking doing anything. Look at this! How fucking cool that is! I mean, forgive the kind of choppy animation, but yeah! A fucking sand submarine! It's actually really, really fucking cool. Oh shit! They're firing at us hard. Oh yeah! Screw you, old man. You're not as cool as me. Uh-oh. Oh, shit. Son of the beach. Well, that's not good. So this is the other interesting thing about the uh, the desert. It seems like the desert works like friggin' quicksand for anything that weighs over a few hundred pounds. Because these ships start sinking into the sand. Oh, we gotta go. So there's a button to do stuff, but I want to get the items first. Come on. Come on, go faster. Go faster. It's filling up. Shit, you know, I think I wanted to go that way. 
Whoops. Okay, we've got Rosasol. Rosasol is the ether, the thing that we use to uh, refill our ether points. Can we can we stop it? No, we cannot. Looks like we got to go down instead of up. Shit. All right, here we are in a fucking burning down engine room. Oh, climb the ladder. There we go. Uh oh. Even though this ship is sinking into the water, they're sending dudes at us to stop us from escaping. He just looked at his friends before he died. He's just like, I guess I'm dead. Uh... Damn, how many corporal shit? Things are dire. Also, how many corporals do you need? So Doc has a stand of himself that he does kung fu attacks with. What? He just does like sick air combos and shit. Oh yeah, this is the first combat you guys are seeing with Doc. Doc's crazy. Doc's great. He's too powerful. He's too useful of a character. Leather vest. Let's equip that on Faye. Wow. Your attack and um, defense stats are the main stats that increase over the course of the game. And those bars increase and decrease in proportion like all the other bars. So you end up with these really weird, like, uh, status bars by the end of the game where you don't really know what the hell anything means. And it's just kind of annoying to have. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, explosions. Everybody's shooting at us. No. I didn't actually mean to do that. Oh, man. Wow. It, what? Screw it. More combat. Mortal combat. Get him. And for that being his first death blow is pretty nuts. Because they... Like, the death blows are pretty varied and cool and everything, but they only increase in complexity. Like, look at this one in comparison. The first one, he does air combos. The second one, he calls out a stand to beat the shit out of the guy. Like, setting the bar high for combos, seriously. Extra AR plus one. Oh shit, an explosion. It's real bad. I need to get up there. Where do I even go? Oh, here we go, ladder. I jumped over it before. There we go. It's cool to see the level like actively coming down around us. We got out of there just in time. All right, so uh, we are going to end this level words episode. There we go, with an awesome cliffhanger next to the save spot here. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Xeno Gears. Tune in with us next time to the stunning and dramatic conclusion of whatever this bullshit is. Bye. Mm -hmm.